What's going on, everybody? It is Kellen here from Start Your Systems, and welcome back to MX Bikes, we, where today we are going to be playing the 2023 ARL Finals track and talking about the first round of the 2023 Super Motocross World Championship. Uh, for those of you that don't know, MX Bikes is doing like a, a playoff this year, uh, similar to what Super Motocross is doing. They are calling it the finals, which I guess technically SMX is also calling it the finals. Uh, but they're building the tracks beforehand, which is basically exactly like what the Sim series would normally do. So the track is a little bit different than what we saw on the weekend, but that is uh, the track that we're playing. It is a paid mod, so just keep that in mind. If you're looking to get it, I'll, I'll include the download link in the description, but you do have to pay for it. But I wanted to just kind of talk about this track and then talk about the race on the weekend. My thoughts on Super Motocross as a whole and then what I think is going to happen in these next two weeks because uh, this is going to be pretty gnarly, I feel like, with what we've seen at the opening round so far. And I'm excited for it. So I'm going to do one lap here in third person just to kind of show off like an outer perspective of the track. But I play this game now uh, almost exclusively in first person. So I'm a little rough around the edges with the third stuff th these days. But I uh, just wanted to kind of show off the track. So, like I said, a couple things are a little bit different. But... For the most part, you get the gist. It's it's the same track at ZMAX Dragway that happened uh, over the weekend. So yeah, let's talk about it, right? Uh, Super Motocross, a lot of people had a lot of criticisms coming in about, oh, this is stupid. Why do we have three more races? Uh, it's just a longer season. These guys already have a long season. Do we really need more of it? And I, I got a lot of those criticisms, but then, you know, there's a lot of money up for grabs. And I've also seen people say, oh, but you guys don't, you keep not talking about the fact that the money goes to the teams. And while that technically is true, Believe me, all of these teams are going to pay the athletes the, the prize money. For them, it's not really anything that they're uh, needing to go after or do. Will we hear of maybe a team or two doing something shady because of this? Yes, but most of the riders are going to get the money from this, and it's a lot of money. Even finishing dead last, uh, or really 22nd, I should say, not dead dead last, because there's a chance you could finish outside the top 22 in 450 SMX. But even if you finish outside the top uh, 22, or inside the top 22 and 450 SMX, you're guaranteed $25,000, which is a lot of money for some, you know, privateer guys that uh, will probably get that money. Kevin Morant's made it in this weekend. Jerry Robin was there. Um, you know, Ty Masterpool had a really good weekend. He's almost, in my opinion, guaranteed to finish in a position where he's going to get a lot of money, which is huge for him because he is obviously still pretty much a privateer. He's got some help from that, like, HBI program, but uh, it's not a factory effort or anything like that. So... There's a lot of money up for grabs. A lot of these guys are going to need that money, and, and, it, and it goes to helping out a lot of uh, people that kind of deserve to get paid. And it's off of this three-race format. Why is it this extra three races, and why did they not just like add it to the purse money that was already uh, for the rest of the seasons and just keep it the way it was and all that stuff like that? Well, to get this money, they had to go and do a new TV package deal. They really had to. Uh, they were in alternating years with Nationals and Supercross where Nationals would sign their deal and then two years later Supercross would sign their deal and back and forth and back and forth, which is why we had Mav TV for one year. But anyway, they went and got a new deal. They worked together. MX Sports and Feld worked together to collaborate and said, hey, we're going to do playoffs, which every TV executive in the world is like, oh my God, playoffs? Like We could sell so much of playoffs and the format and all this stuff like that. They love it. They eat it up. And they signed a five-year agreement, which is unprecedented in the sport, to be on Peacock exclusively, but also on NBC on some races. Uh, uh, the first round was on USA Network. So all in all, like the TV package doesn't look like it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It was a very big money deal. It was a very long-term deal. And it brought in a lot of extra money they didn't have. It used to be to the point where they would only get you know, just outright basically a few million dollars to have the, the races on TV. And they have a lot more money coming in because of this TV package deal. And for the most part, it seems like almost all of that extra money that they're getting for this TV package is going into the purse for this SMX playoff thing. So I, I'm kind of like tired of hearing people say like, this is dumb extra races. What, where'd the money come from? I don't even understand. It's, you know, right in front of you guys. Like they signed a big TV deal and any big TV deal is going to have a lot of money with it. And with that money, they've trickled it down so that it now goes into the purse. And that's why there's so much money available. Um, so yeah, like that's the good part of it. And then on top of that, yes, we do have three extra races, but they chose, uh, Feld Entertainment chose to stop hosting the Monster Cup to make this happen. So that's one less race that they are promoting. And then MX Sports chose to do one less national to help make this happen. So that's one less race that they are promoting. So the way that they phrase it was like, you know, we used to have 30, now we have 31 uh, if you count Monster Cup. But even if you don't count Monster Cup, yeah, it's two extra races. We still end 
uh, right before the end of September. I think the plan is to even go earlier than this in future years. Like they want to be done by mid-September. And so, yeah, the racing season is a long one. I get it. But when there's a lot of money on the line for this, and you can tell these factory guys this weekend were definitely going for it. Jason Anderson throwing it in against Jet Lawrence and uh, Chase Sexton looking real fired up and Joe Shimoda winning and Tom Fial looking really, really strong. And like these guys want this. So um, it was just exciting to kind of see it all come together. I don't think that uh, Z-Max Dragway was really that great of a place to host it, but that's okay. Like I think they could have, you know, figured out some better options and I'm sure they will for the future years. I hope that they also don't ever do day races for this. Um, I think for this one, there was a little bit of like, they could slot it in in TV at a certain time. And I'd also think that it was gonna cost a lot of extra money to bring in some lights uh, to this outer area right here. Cause there are lights that line the entire drag strip, but uh, they're obviously gonna go beyond the drag strip right here. Like we're jumping out of the drag strip area by going all the way out here. So that'd be extra area that they need to have lights. But Chicago is gonna be at night. So that's gonna be good. Like they'll make it work and they'll have it feel much more like a big show and big stage and all this stuff like that. Um, so anyway, enough about all the event and all that stuff like that. I think it went pretty well for the first one. The racing was was good. Uh, could it have been better? Yes, but I think with these dragways, with this like long straightaway stuff that they do, um, you're going to have a pretty one-lined racetrack, and that's exactly what we ended up getting, very one-lined. Uh, I still felt like there was some passing, more so than I expected, but not enough, and they'll probably have to figure out how to combine the moto elements and the supercross elements. I think for me personally, I would like to see at least in the future them consider going actually to a motocross track for one of these rounds and building like some supercross elements on a motocross track, but actually having like, no, this is like a national with a few supercross sections and that's how we're getting this to be like super motocross and have uh, a moto track and a supercross track and then the finals. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it worked okay. Uh, Chase Sexton obviously goes 1-1. He wins. He came into the championship. I've seen some people confused about this as well. He came into the championship with 25 points already because they gave everybody a full race distance worth of points based on seeding coming into the championship. And because Chase Sexton scored more points on a 450 than anybody else this year, he was the number one seed. Aaron Plessinger was number two. Chet Lawrence was number three. Crazy that Lawrence only raced 450 motocross and still finished third. But a lot of guys missed this year. So, um, you know, I get it. Either way, they all got one race distance worth of points. So Sexton started on 25. That's why he was the red plate holder. Blessinger started on 22. Uh, Jet started on 20 points and so on and so forth. And that's why after the first round, Chase has 50 points. And those guys aren't right behind on, uh, you know, 44 it would be and then 40 points or whatever it is. Or actually 25, 22, 20. They all started with the seeding points. And now it's uh, 50 to 38 and 38 for Plessinger and Sexton. But neither of those guys got on the podium except Chase Sexton, of course, because Ken Roxon finished second, Dylan Frannis finished third. Frannis looked really, really good. I feel like this is his way of showing to a lot of teams that are not going to have him on the team next year, like that you're missing out. Uh, he is not going back to star racing Yamaha. We believe he is going to uh, HEP, and we think that's going to stay Suzuki, and Kenny will go back there. So HEP Suzuki next year would be Frannis and Roxon, which is <laughs> honestly kind of a low-key powerhouse team. And, uh, yeah, I think Ferrandis is showing like, Hey, you guys are missing the mark here. I still have a lot left in me on a supercross track. I obviously have a lot left in me on a motocross track. He finished second in the outdoor championship. So yeah, um, cool to see Ferrandis do well. Roxton, I thought was going to win that last race, but just seemed to run out of steam a little bit. And I think that's, you know, just not racing as much and, uh, needing to get a little bit more seat time coming into this to feel a little bit more ready, I think. But Chase was also going really fast. Jet also really fast in the last race. And uh, Jet had a really rough first moto. It was the first moto we've seen him lose, or first race we've seen him lose uh, in the AMA scene. Obviously, he lost a moto at the Motocross of Nations against Maxime Renault. But uh, first moto he's lost on a 450 in the AMA scene side of things. And yeah, just... Uh, you know, some people said, oh, maybe it was the, like the hangover of the perfect season or whatever. He said it was more setup based. Like he went wrong with the setup. Sick barrel roll right there. He went wrong with the setup and then decided to change it back. And it worked a lot better rolling into the next moto. So that's why he was better in the second moto, but still got a bad start, which the starts are way off for him, which they had been really good outdoors all year. So that was a little peculiar, but I, I think he'll get better. And another thing you have to factor in is, um, you know, these races are going to be double points coming up here uh, at Chicago and then triple points at the finale. 
and Jet is 12 points down, and it's going to be this weekend. It's going to be six points between the winner and second place, and then nine points between the winner and second place at the f final round. So, being 12 points down almost means nothing. Like he can win the last two and, and easily win this championship. So if you're Sexton, you absolutely have to win either Chicago or LA uh, to have a chance at winning the title. I feel like versus Jet, who has been so good all year, but Jet was also you know a little bit off the mark. So we'll see if he rolls it into Chicago with a little bit better feeling. And then, uh, yeah, Cooper Webb debut on the Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing. Well, return to Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing. And I feel like a lot of people, it, it's so weird. A lot of people criticized, why is Webb going back to Yamaha? He sucked on a Yamaha. He's not giving enough credit to KTM. The difference is Webb rode for Star Yamaha from uh, 2012 when he debuted until 2016. At the end of 2016, he moved to a 450. And with that, he left Star and went to Factory Yamaha. And Factory Yamaha was by all terms, not a very well-run organization at that time. Things were not going as smoothly as a lot of people had hoped over there. So when Webb went there, he was going to a team that really wasn't you know, jiving. Uh, they were really off on fix, fi figuring out things with the bike. They had really old management there. And that's why Yamaha eventually decided to contract out the factory Yamaha 450 team to Star. And so now Star runs it. It is still owned by Yamaha, uh, that team, but Star runs their program. And you can tell the difference is massive. They went from a team that struggled to get on the podium to signing Dylan Ferrandez up to a 450 ride. He wins an outdoor title. They sign Eli Tomac. He wins an outdoor uh, indoor title. Like they have made leaps and bounds gains on the team itself. And where Webb is going is a completely different team than he rode for when he was making his 450 debut on a Yamaha. So it's completely different. I feel like no one's giving enough credit to that because it doesn't matter the bike. Like, yes, the bike is a Yamaha and Webb wasn't good on a Yamaha. Bike's different though. It's a different bike than he ever raced uh, back then. And it's a completely different team and a team that he was very comfortable with before. So I think this is a massive, uh, in my opinion, right step move for Webb in his career because he's really unhappy or was really unhappy at KTM. But it didn't go very well at the first round of SMX for him. I think, you know, maybe just a little bit oversold himself, I think. I think he felt like, oh, I've been testing this bike for a long time. I can just come out swinging. But he looked, I guess, aside from Kenny, he looked a little bit off compared to all the other guys that have been racing this entire summer. And there's no um, preparation like gate drops, really. You know, I think that he was probably a little bit rusty having not raced in a little bit of time. And uh, now he is going to see if he can build on that and try to get better for Chicago and maybe by LA. He'll be up there mixing it up with those guys because I expect he will. Um, yeah, he's not necessarily the best outdoor rider in the world, but he's one of, if not, you know, the top two or three best Supercross riders in the world right now, in my opinion. And I don't think that he's going to get worse on that Yamaha. So. Yeah, we'll see how he improves this week at uh, Chicago Land, but Chicago is also going to be a little bit more of an outdoorsy track, so we'll see about that as well. And then uh, let's talk 250 class a little bit. Joe Shimoda gets the win there. He is now tied with Hayden Deegan in the championship because, again, even though Shimoda won and Deegan finished third, Deegan had more seeding points going in because he raced a full 250 Supercross season while Shimoda was out injured. Uh, for most of it, he did end up coming back, and then Deegan and Shimoda finished very close in points in 250 motocross. So there was, I think, three, two positions between them, right? Deegan, no, Deegan was the two seed, and Shimoda was the five seed, I believe. So three positions between them, but that somehow works out enough that the five points Shimoda gained on Deegan over the weekend equals out, and they are now tied on points. And Hunter Lawrence, for as rough of a day as he had at the opener, is just three points back because he came in as the number one seed, had those 25 points in hand, and now he uh, can roll into Chicago land and not be very far down at all. Like I said, because of this double and triple points format, it makes kind of the first round not really matter that much. Like, it's still a big deal to go out there and kind of set the tone like Shimoda did. But Hunter Lawrence could come out and win Chicago and have the red plate easily in hand going into the finals uh, at LA. So yeah, I don't think that uh, I'm not worried about Hunter Lawrence. I think he and Jet both maybe had a little bit of the motocross hangover, but they both also looked like once they kind of, you know, shook the cobwebs off a little bit, they looked better in the motos by the end. So we'll see if they can kind of figure it out and move forward. Uh, Hayden Deegan looked really, really good in the first moto and pretty good in the second moto. I think starts seem to really kind of determine a little bit more of what Deegan's going to do at this point than it used to. Like, I feel like he could start 10th and finish second. 
and I don't know if the, the field was just a little bit more hyped up in that second moto or what, but it felt like by the time he got into fourth, that was really all he had left, and maybe he maybe he exerted himself a little bit in the first motor or what have you, but those guys did get away a little bit, and then by the time he was there, they were a little bit too far gone. So, yeah, if he got up into third, I think it was, or actually, I think he had to get all the way to second, but if he did get all the way to second, he would have won the overall because he won the first moto. But Shimoda wins the overall, Vial finishes second. I think they actually tied on points for the day. And uh, to reiterate, for those of you that are like completely confused, it's a two-moto format, and the lowest score on the day wins basically like the main event as it were would be um so shimoda he went uh three one and obviously that's four points and then vial went uh what was it two two or whatever it was so that was also four points and because of that shimoda has a tiebreaker because he won the second moto he has a better second moto score and wins the event and then the points are divvied out based on that so shimoda winning the event gets 25 points vial finishing second gets 22 points it's a little confusing. I get it. It's the first year. I think a little bit of confusion is going to stay stemmed around this in the coming weeks. But um, yeah, I feel like it'll kind of work itself out. It's going to it's gonna get real gnarly when we get the double and triple points in there as well. Like I feel like that's going to throw a wrench in a lot of what people think or don't think about it. But either way, um, I, I felt like it was a pretty good first round. Uh, were there a couple things that like I wanted a little bit different? Yeah, but I mean, it was as close to as what ad what was advertised i feel like for this event as you could possibly get a lot of guys healthy really in the 250 class the only people that aren't there um are factory guys that didn't make it into the top 20 and chose to sit out like cameron mcadoo um uh daxon bennick styles robertson they could have raced they chose not to because they would have to race the lcq every week like we see austin forkner having to do so they did not want to do that um, but everyone else pretty much is there. Jet Lawrence qualified in the 250 class, but of course is racing a 450. And then Chance Hymas has a torn ACL, so he's not out there either. But that's that's about it. Like, obviously Thrasher got hurt, so he's not available right now either. But a lot of a lot of talented guys showed up, and a lot of healthy guys are there that we wouldn't normally see. These guys, you know, normally we would see, um, you know, we would see a guy like Forkner get hurt in Supercross and miss half a Nationals and be like, that's it. You know, there's no point in coming back. But he did cho choose to come back and chose to race. And then Seth Hammaker getting injured at the second Supercross round of the year and did choose to come back. Like, the, it's giving these guys reason to uh, return to racing. And while I'm not necessarily, like, in love with Super Motocross as a concept, there is some positives for sure that you can take away from it. Um, like getting these guys back on the racetrack for us fans, uh, seeing a little bit more racing. And so far, at least, nobody really suffered any, like, crazy major injury. That's when I think people will start complaining about it is if we have a potential like 450 title contender get hurt at this and then because of this he misses the start of supercross next year but that did not happen yet and i don't know that it really will happen because i feel like these these tracks are being a little bit more tame on the supercross side and not as gnarly on the motocross side this hybrid format these guys you know we saw some crashes but nothing was really like whoa that was you know mind bending and those guys should take it easy or whatever i, I think I think they're going to figure out a recipe for this that works, keeps the tracks like fairly easy, the racing close because of it, and hopefully we get some good racing. So I'm excited for Chicago land this weekend. I keep saying Chicago, but it's at Chicago land in Joliet, Illinois. Uh, I will be going. I'm flying out tomorrow, so looking forward to uh, going and maybe seeing a few of you guys there. If anybody else comes up and says hi to me, never hesitate to do so. Always happy to say, hey, I'll be walking through the pits quite a decent bit on the weekend. I'll definitely be there pretty much all day Friday and Saturday. So yeah, I'm excited to just kind of see what this is all about. I didn't get to go this past weekend. Obviously watched it on TV like the rest of you guys. And uh, now get to go see what Super Motocross is all about. And then after that, I'll come back and share my thoughts on what I felt like uh, being there in person with you guys. But that's my thoughts on the first round of Super Motocross here in the USA. And uh, we got three red plate holders rolling into this weekend. Deegan Shimoda tied in 250s, Chase Sexton in 450s, and now double points on the line for Chicago. Going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As always, appreciate you stopping by and watching another video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.